Hi, I hope you're doing really well. Thanks for joining me. I thought it might be interesting to show you a little bit what it's like to mix music. Uh, friends of mine ask me, what do you actually do at work? Um, how does it actually work? Um, there are a couple of ways um, it, you can work as a sound engineer mixing and producing music. The old school days, in the old school days, it was uh, big consoles and big studios. Um, you can actually still produce and record music that way, of course. It's really expensive. The consoles, they cost hundreds of thousands of dollars. You know, those, all those big um, channel strips, hundreds of buttons and knobs. Um, it's really exciting to mix that way. Um, but you can do all of that pretty much in um, the box, as um, we call it. Um, the box is the computer. You can do it all inside the computer. Um, there's fantastic software now, um, or has been for a while. I've been using that for years, uh, but it gets better. Um, and that software models the old analog gear, and it behaves the same way and sounds pretty much the same. Um, so it's fantastic, and it just uh, reduces the cost of the equipment drastically. Um, so it makes it more affordable and uh, in the reach of lots of people who can basically start recording and mixing at home. Um, you still need a good room and all that, of course, but um, there are also room simulations um, when you can plug your guitar, for example, straight into your, um, your computer interface, audio interface. And then you take the dry signal and put it through a simulation of a room and suddenly it sounds like you actually played it in that room. Um, it's really powerful. I'll show you some of that uh, here. So um, I've got a song of mine, of my electronic music project, Bosco. Uh, you can go to uh, the webpage, boscomusic.com. That's B-O-S-K-E-R music.com. And the song is called Bethel's, and I made a beautiful video um, of Bethel's Beach, which is a beautiful beach out in, at the west coast in Auckland. I go there quite a lot to relax and just chill out, really, see something else. And it's such a nice spot, and it inspired this music. Um, I tried to um, pay homage to that feeling I get when I'm out there at Bethel. So it's very ambient, beautiful melodies, lush soundscape. Um, so yeah, go to boscomusic.com. It's there, you can watch it. Um, you can get the music there as well. Um, let me play you a little bit. see it um, it's very atmospheric um, some nice synthesizer sounds later on I've got some strings and a beautiful guitar solo actually I just skip forward to that a little bit.
get the idea. So let me go through it so you can see what's happening. So I'm opening up that mixer. Um, so a few channels here with the instruments and quite a lot of plugins, uh, the ones that I've been talking about before. Um, let me just solo the main guitar. That was quite, quite a lot of ambience over it, a lot of reverb and quite a beautiful um, balanced sound to it because it is the main instrument of the, uh, of the piece. It has to have this really rich sound. If it was just part of a bigger, um, bigger uh, mix, bigger, bigger um, arrangement, where the guitar just played a minor part, um, I would mix it completely different so that it kind of cuts through the lusher um, sound that's provided by the other instruments. But here it's basically the main instrument. So I'll just show you the dry sound. So what I did is I plugged my electric guitar straight into the computer and this is what it sounds like. Quite different, huh? So obviously right there in your face um, and um, it's not that exciting really that sound. Um, so what I did, I've got an amp simulator can simulate everything, it's crazy. Um, this one is a beautiful old uh, Vox amp. Beatles played through it. Um, it's, I think, I don't know how old, how old it is, 50s, 60s or so, so I switched that on. You can tell um, it's got a lot more high frequency now and it actually sounds like a guitar amp, like an electric guitar. So much of the sound is the amp that you play through. Um, see here I added quite a bit of um, high frequency treble mids. Here you can actually simulate the loudspeaker as well, which loudspeaker you uh, choose and you can um, choose the microphone you put on. This is a dynamic mic which is quite uh, direct sounding, uh, doesn't um, pick up too much ambience and uh, you can also change the uh, location and the loudspeaker itself. So maybe you can hear that when I move that around. Uh, let me choose a different microphone. This is a condenser microphone. It starts to sound quite different. So back to the good old SM57. It's a very popular microphone. Uh, especially for instruments and guitar, so that works really well. Then I added some um, effect or a spin box, like a guitar pedal. You might have seen guitarists with all those stomp boxes on the floor. Stomp box because you just stomp on it and switch it on. So now it kind of has this shimmering sound kind of which moves in the stereo left and right a little bit. Just makes it a bit more interesting and a bit more ambient the sound. Next I had to change the sound a little bit. So this is an equalizer, a multiband uh, equalizer. You basically select a frequency and you can raise it or lower it and if you think it's too bass heavy then uh, you take the lower frequencies out. That's what I did there and I added a little bit of the high frequencies. So let me switch that on. My loudspeakers are over there by the way. I'm mixing with my uh, laptop, oh, not with a, with a monitor speaker there and a monitor screen there which kind of forces me to when I want to listen to it I actually have to move here and then I'm in the stereo field and you actually listen when I'm here I actually adjust and focus 
uh, on uh, the computer interface and it's kind of a different part of your brain that you engage so when you have your monitor speakers right in the same direction as your uh, computer monitor screen you kind of distract yourself from listening by just looking at the screen and you start to mix with all the graphic interfaces and not with your ears so now that forces me to actually listen and mix with my ears. Just a bit of trivia, those problems a uh, sound engineer has to deal with. <laughs> uh, let me just go back to the start. So I just switched that EQ in and out so you can hear. Actually, let me go over there. You also hear a bit of a level drop, which is not a problem because I'll make up for that later on again. But the, the quality of the sound changes dramatically. If I have too much low frequency and then I put it in with uh, the other instruments, it kind of all masks each, each other and swamps. It gets swamped by the, synth, uh, by the synthesizer and so on. So it doesn't actually sound that great. So that's why I put that on. Um, let me just quickly turn up my monitor level. It's better. Uh, next, I put a compressor in. Uh, this is also from Solid State Logic. SSL, by the way, is an old uh, English company that make beautiful, or still make beautiful mixing desks those huge desks uh, that I talked about before, but they also have a uh, really good um, plug-in suite. So this is a compressor. What a compressor does basically, it uh, looks at uh, the high bits, uh, the really loud bits in um, the guitar in this instance, and ducks it down and kind of goes, okay, you're too high there. I set kind of uh, a, a threshold, it's called, kind of a volume um, threshold. When it's louder than that, it pulls it down. And that allows me to lift the entire uh, sound up, makes it louder. So it basically compresses the dynamic range. So this is what this one does. Um, so you can see it working here, kind of those uh, individual notes that just ping out a bit too much. It just controls them and pulls them down. And then I can push everything up. So you actually hear a volume change. Right. That's what this does. Then next, um, now this is a beautiful piece of um, old school analog hardware which has been modeled. Um, it's kind of what I was talking about before and it just sounds fantastic. So. Um, the EQ, it's an EQ equalizer, basically similar to what I did before. But this one sounds really smooth and transparent and I'm using this just to add a little bit of more high frequency sheen on it. So let me go back. Right. i turn it off again. So it just makes it sound sweeter and um, that high frequency also change um, uh, I use that to make it ping kind of come out of the mix and then lastly in here I've got um, a tape machine simulation like back in the old days you recorded straight onto tape and that put some special sound on it as well and its own characteristics and it's quite pleasing uh, it has a really smooth sound to it. Um, so put that in. And that kind of has its own frequency response as well. It adds a little bit more roundness around the lower frequencies if you want. Um, and I'll just switch that off again. So it's very subtle. I can certainly hear the difference. Um, if you can't doesn't matter too much but it helps kind of gluing everything together so uh, it's nice and then here I've got 
um, because now it sounds still really dry. It sounds like you're in a room, a small room right next to the guitar. But if you remember from before, it actually sounds really lush. Um, the mix, so I added some ambience to it. <laughs> Changed dramatically, right? Okay. And what I'm using is this plugin here. It's a convolution reverb. So I'm sure you've heard of reverb units. It does exactly that. It adds space. This one, someone actually went into this beautiful hall, which has 1.6 seconds of uh, reverberation time so it's like a beautiful concert hall like um, if you live in Auckland where I live uh, we've got the town hall which is exactly 1.6 seconds reverb by the way bit of trivia again um, and this beautiful reverb so like if you clap in that hall now here as you could hear is really dry if you put that through that reverb it had this beautiful tail uh, so that is actually the real reverb of a hall which was kind of sampled. It's a bit more complicated than that, but um, it's quite an involved way of getting the actual frequency response, uh, reverb response uh, of that hall into a plugin. But this is what this does. Switch it off again. dramatic change, right? And now because I want it to sound in the whole um, song really lush and I just want to go extreme um, to add ambience. I'll just go back to there. So I added another reverb which is an old reverb unit which was introduced in the well, actually no 70s or so and was groundbreaking when it came out think of Vangelis um, he used it quite a lot for Blade Runner soundtrack those long reverb sounds um, so I put one which has 5.2 second reverb time so it takes 5.2 seconds uh, for the sound to die off completely so if I just solo that This is just the reverb now. I've got a few more uh, instruments going through than just the guitar. Well, you can hear that big lush sound. Okay. All right, so that's basically the main guitar. Let's, I'll just loop some of that guitar solo and I'll play you that. So it's basically the same thing I did there. Um, now let me switch off everything. Dry recording of the guitar. I went straight in to uh, my computer interface. And here is another guitar amp. This time it's a Fender uh, amp. Um, I'm sure you've heard of the brand Fender. It's they basically Leo Fender, who started. He basically invented the electric guitar and electric bass. Absolute legend, and he made beautiful amps as well. So this is an emulation of that. Uh, with this time I used a condenser microphone, which works differently than the dynamic, but I, that goes into too much detail now. Um, okay, so this is that. And also I put some stomp boxes in. It's just some gentle distortion with a fuzz pedal. It's a, uh, <laughs> Jimi Hendrix used to uh, use that fuzz. Um, pedal quite a lot. It's kind of his signature sound. Um, came out in the 70s, I think, or probably earlier than that, not sure. 
Okay, uh, next thing. He is a channel strip. So this is actually an emulation of, you know, those big consoles. They've got so many different knobs and so on, but it's all organized in a channel. So guitar goes in and it goes through all those equalizers and compressors and a master fader in, uh, in the end, or a fader in the bottom, and then that gets multiplied by how many inputs that console has. So some studio consoles got 60 inputs, so that's why it's such a big disc. So this is an emulation of an SSL console. You've got the equalizer here, input filters, where you can just uh, take all of the lows off, for example, if you wanted to, and all of the highs off if you wanted to, but you can also just take some of it off. And equalizer and compressor, similar to what I showed you before. So I did that, and now here, this one is interesting. This is an emulation of an old um, delay unit, which works with a tube, an actual rubber tube. Uh, you put a little microphone in there, and at the end of the tube, a little loudspeaker, and when uh, you put, feed some audio into that, it takes a while to go through the tube because the sound has to travel all the distance of the tube, and when the loudspeaker no, actually, when the microphone picks it up, so the loudspeaker plays it, of course, and the microphone picks it up, uh, there's a delay. So there are two of those tubes in that uh, unit, so you can have a stereo, one for left, one for right. Um, and I set very short delay times uh, for left and right, but they are different, and then I push them extreme left and extreme right in the stereo, um, and when you do that, suddenly that mono guitar, which is basically right in the middle, um, in the mix it sounds a bit unnatural because if it's right there, it doesn't have that much ambience around it, even though I'll put it through a reverb as well. But if you put it through that delay, it just widens it out. So let me show you what that sounds like. Now it's off again. Now it's on again. Fabulous. Okay. And then another fantastic piece of old school analog equipment. This is a, um, a compressor. Very simple to operate. So it takes the peaks that really loud parts um, in the track and reduces it. You can see it work there. And it's such a beautiful sound and it sounds so musical and it doesn't sound um, artificial at all. This unit, so that's why I love it. And then again, a tape machine. And this one, I actually I'm over driving the input, so it's distorting a little bit, you can hear that, and it just adds a quite pleasing um, distortion, I find. Right. Okay, um, now reverb. That Vangelis like really long reverb. And another one of those delays, this one, with the tubes, but now I set the delay time quite long, so you can actually hear the delay, 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 and it's uh, a different delay interval, um, the left to the right, so it goes delay, 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 delay. Okay. you can hear that? Boom, 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 boom. It's pretty cool. Adds lots more space and ambience. It's fantastic, I love it. Actually, I use that on every single track in my upcoming album. Um, it's called Curious, and it, I made it with a good friend of mine in Melbourne. She's 
Sarah, Sarah Kuro, she is a fantastic violinist, and um, her husband is uh, Luthier, and he came up with this beautiful new design of an electric violin. Sounds nothing like other electric violins. It's really rich, beautiful. Sounds like a violin, but you can plug it in like my electric guitar straight into there, um, and you can do things with it, like add that ambience and you've got lots more control over it rather than um, recording a acoustic, a real violin, a normal violin, um, because then you pick up all that um, room sound where you're recording it and with an electric violin you don't. Um, so I've got this new album coming up, um, very ambient, beautiful soundscapes. Um, I love it. Really looking forward to uh, releasing it. So that's coming out soon. Okay, but I digress. Now, next, let's take this loop off, go back to the beginning, and what shall we add? Uh, bass. Here's some bass. Oomphy bass, right? Whirr. Take everything off. So now it's just the straight bass, same again, straight into the computer. Um, I did it all in my living room. Why not? Um, okay, first, what have you? Another channel strip. So it's straight into the mixing desk basically, like the emulation of that big mixing console. And I just added some low frequency here, and tucked out um, some of the higher mids. So you can hear it's a bit richer now in the bass. Uh, dropped in level, but I'll make up for that later again. Let's switch it off here. And back in. There's a bit of compression going on here as well. Just a tad though. Pedal board. Right, what am I doing here? Not much. Hmm. This is the tremolo, which basically just gives some movement to a long note because I've got very long notes like this one. And it just goes woo, 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 and you can set the speed. So this one is going really slowly. Just to add some movement into it, makes it a bit more interesting. All right, uh, next we've got, uh, I love this plugin, um, the, those old equalizers, um, those old analog equalizers, are just so nice. So what am I doing here? I'm giving it even more bass. there because all of the other instruments they are adding so much higher frequencies and they kind of fill out that um, upper frequency space and there's actually not that much space for the bass so the bass should just really do what it's supposed to do provide bass so there you go switch it off again not that much bass and now it's all about that bass. Right, and what more? So, uh, another fantastic emulation. I just keep saying that. Um, this is a lovely compressor. Because of the long notes in the bass, there's a natural sustain in the guitar. Um, bass guitar and it just drops off after a while and um, I set this compressor so that it doesn't let the note kind of fade out um, so quickly. So now it's basically a very sustained long note. If I turn this off. It dies off a little bit quicker. Actually not this one because this is a really resonant note in the bass itself. Let's try this one. You can hear it die away there, a little bit, so if we go back. And it just sustains longer. 
Okay, and here a precision channel strip. What the heck did I do there? Oh, guess what? I added more bass. Really? It's been a while that I looked at this actually. Yeah, I added more bass and more compression. Obviously, when I set the other um, compressor and equalizer, I thought it wasn't quite enough after a while when I mixed it in with all the other instruments. So I just added some more. I was like, why not? Okay, and guess what? Another tape machine. that <coughs> just makes it sound a bit smoother because without it before I was actually getting quite in your face just really gnarly a bit so if I turn this off you can hear it working a bit hard but with it it's a bit smoother and then next what did I have here ambience Oh yeah, another type of reverb. <laughs> this is an old school reverb. Um, crazy way of making a reverb unit. Um, but that's how they did it back in the old days and it sounds really interesting. They basically put a huge metal plate inside a box in a big room. So it's, I don't know, three meters long, meter high huge metal plate and at the end so that in the wooden box in the end they put a loudspeaker in and in the other end a microphone so whatever you want to add reverb to you play on the loudspeaker and one end and then it travels over that metal plate adds some roominess to it and you record it with the microphone and feed it back in this is what this does So you can hear the ambience, right? Turn this off. Now it's really dry. Back on. And this helps uh, the long notes of the bass, or kind of the, the direct sound, kind of spread out over the entire uh, stereo field. Okay, and then I added some more. Ah, actually, before, there was the convolution reverb. Uh, let me rephrase all of that. So now that's the, the plate plugin. Without and with. And now the convolution reverb, the 1.6 re uh, second ambience of that concert hall in there so it, now it's got a lot of space around it okay guitar back in so you see how it works together now it kind of feels out more of the frequency range the bass just adding bass because there's a lot of high frequency going on from the guitars but then why right, there's more there is a synthesizer that really fills it up now right Just, um, it's just a synthesizer. Old school synthesizer. 
as an old plugin, but why not? Uh, let me just switch off everything. fast now. Uh, I'm just adding a bit of mid frequencies just to help it stand out. Stereo delay. Just add some space. Reverb. Add more space. And now shape the frequencies a little bit out so uh, that it helps to helps it to uh, cut through the mix to kind of take up its own space in the stereo uh, image of everything of the whole uh, song um, and next a comp my favorite compressor again oh, this one is just limiting actually so this is really just uh, in case something really picks, uh, sticks out, it just pulls it down. That's all it does. I'm not going to go through and fi try and find that place. Ah, another instance of it, and well, ah, there must be for different notes. Anyway, and a mastering plugin. I put that in. Now what did I do? Ah, interesting. Okay. So, this is a beautiful mastering plugin from Abbey Road. You, you must have heard of Abbey Road. Um, Beatles Abbey Road. Um, they recorded that album and many, or pretty much all of their albums, in the Abbey Road studio in London. It's a legendary studio and they've got basically the best gear. And they made this plugin, which is modeled on some of their old mastering uh, consoles. Um, mastering basically is you finish a mix, you finish uh, a song, but then you finish another song and it sounds slightly different. Kind of the frequency response of someone is a bit bass heavier than the first one. So in mastering, you even that out. And this plugin is fantastic in doing that. So what you can do actually here, I switched the equalizer. Uh, I've been using quite lots of equalization in this mix already. Um, you set it to mid side, so you change the information that's just in the center. Uh, you can change that independently to the information that's just far left and right in the mix. So what I added here is um, high frequencies at the far left and right of that um, synthesizer, which just basically pulls it outwards, make, takes up more space in the stereo mix. Switch that off. So it's subtle. Should turn it on. So in the high frequencies, the high frequencies you can hear that it goes just a bit wider. Subtle, but subtle things do the trick. You don't want to go with a, a sledgehammer and change things and change that and change that. You basically just ruin it. So the idea is to, you take a beautiful sound and then change it slightly. Uh, to make it work with the other bits. And just some compression. And put it through the same reverb unit as the other bits. A long Vangelis-like uh, reverb. Um, just to glue it together with all the other instruments. So let's see what we have so far. Next, we've got strings here. And that's actual strings. Um, 
I'm using a plugin, so I could have gone and hired a string section, maybe of the uh, local orchestra, or whatever, but I don't have that kind of money. So instead, I've got a plugin uh, made by the Vienna Symphony um, Orchestra. I'm not sure if that's himself. Uh, himself. Uh, it's his company in Vienna, and they used the Vienna Symphony Orchestra and recorded them, recorded single notes of individual instruments, of string sections, uh, of, of all the basses together, of all the cellos playing together, and all of the flutes or single flutes. So you've got the entire orchestra here, and you can play it on the keyboard. It doesn't quite sound like a real orchestra, because it's really hard to get all the articulations right and so on, but you can do uh, quite a lot with it. So let me just solo that by itself. So it's obviously just strings, low strings at the moment. Violins coming in. And I put it through that delay that I explained before as well. Just to widen it out a bit in space. Gave it a little bit more high frequencies, put it through a channel of that console, of that SSL console. And then at the end, through the tape machine. Or you can really work here at work there. Yeah, you can hear it in the high frequencies. Beautiful. And then here the reverbs. I switch them off. Switch them back in. Okay, so how does that work with all the other instruments? Here I added another synthesizer, which adds the movement into it. I'll just play that. Where is it? So that's just buried in the mix. Um, it just adds a little bit of interest to the kind of long notes because everything is so full now. It just adds a bit of movement to make it more interesting. So I'll just show you that with all the other bits. You can hear it poke up. at the end of the instruments here is another synthesizer more movement you can hear that bubbling away there right just by itself So that adds a lot of movement that you can hear, and that works well with the other synthesizer there. Cool. Ooh, it's nice and low. Frequencies. Okay, just that part again with everything. Uh, where was I?
Okay, and then there's just one last tiny bit in a different part of the song. Actually, it starts at the be beginning. It's a piano. You can hear Tinker right there at the, in the background there. And that's a beautifully sampled Bösendorfer piano, uh, also from that uh, Vienna Symphony Library. Just sounds really nice. And I added um, a bit of compression to that and those reverbs, you know, without the reverbs. A bit dry. It sounds a bit sad, doesn't it? Beep, 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 beep. And with reverb, let me go back. Hmm. All right, so that's all the elements. Um, do this. Let me go to the very beginning. Let's have a listen to the whole thing, huh? Main guitar, solo guitar, bass, key, uh, the, the piano, first synthesizer, second synthesizer down here, third synthesizer is the purple one, and the strings sitting in here.
Well, thank you so much for joining me. I hope that was interesting for you. A um, bit of an insight in what it's like or what is involved in mixing some music. Um, I think I should make more of these probably. Let me know. Um, I also record classical music. Maybe I can um, get some of the orchestras that I record to agree that I use one of the multi tracks to show you what that's like. Maybe. Um, just an idea. Check out that video. Um, it's so beautiful out there at Bethel's Beach. Uh, Tehenga, it's called as well in Mari. Uh, the video I have for the song is just. It's just a beautiful winter's day and I pan across from up on the hill across the uh, the beach. It's so calming. I can recommend. Uh, go to boscomusic.com and you'll see it there. Thanks so much. Um, if you enjoyed this video, hit like. I'd really appreciate that. Um, and see you next time. Bye.